Hello, my name is Davinator. What's up guys, Davinator1212 and it's list day. Ah, uh, yes, list day. And today we're talking about the top 10 best cards of 2022. I know this list might seem a bit late, but you know what? It's never too late to talk about really good Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Cause you know what's something that I'm qualified to talk about? Uh, good Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Wow, that really couldn't be farther from the truth. I would like to think that in the last couple of years, the channel has gotten back to its roots and I've gotten more interested in the bad cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, but I think that is more a symptom than the cause. Without the ability to go to locals for so long, it kind of just turned out that I kind of stopped giving a crap about it. <laughs> so now I am woefully unprepared to talk about a bunch of good cards because I have never seen half of these in my life because they're not in Master Duels. <laughs> or if they are, I don't get that high in, in the rankings because I play garbage. So you know what we're gonna do? Like, as always, when I have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm gonna do my best guess as to why these are good. Without further ado, let's talk about some of the best cards that came out this year. Last year? Last year, like, last year. Number 10 is Math Max Circular. Level four, light cybers monster. 1500 attack, 1500 defense, what do? You can send one Math Mech monster, except Math Max Circular, from your deck to the graveyard, semicolon. Special summon this monster from your hand. Also, you can only attack with one monster this turn. It also has an effect that says, if a Math Mech monster is normal or special summoned to your field while you control this card, you can add one Math Mech spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Okay. This card is really, really, really stupid. I have truly no idea what this deck does, and I can tell you exactly why this card is good. Number one, the mill from your deck is cost to special summon this from your hand. What? Okay, Foolish Burial is a limited card. This does it for cost to then special summon itself. <laughs> wow. There's a reason why like Magician Souls is like a good card and stuff, even though it is stuck in a cruddy deck. <laughs> because the ability to dump monsters out of your deck and then put yourself on the board is a lot of setup and then free field presence. And because the special summons itself, that does mean that you can kind of just play this in other decks if you wanted to run a math mech engine because it really kind of stays out of the way and doesn't take up your normal summon in order to get that set up. And then presumably if you summon this thing and then normal summon something else or whatever the hell the math mech play line is, it has a second effect that gets a spell or trap, which uh, I could only assume is either a negate with the trap or some sort of consistency or field spell with the spell card. because. <laughs> Uh, when you've played one good Yu-Gi-Oh deck, you've played them all. <laughs> this card is an absolutely fantastic starter and does a hell of a lot. Is this somebody's like custom card? Number nine, Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. Really? Why isn't it Dark the Gloomy Dark Charmer? That's bad English. That's like saying the red big ball instead of the big red ball. Why is red big ball? make you sound like you're insane? I don't know, but it is incorrect to say it that way because English. <laughs> link two dark spellcaster with, you know, these arrows. That's always a good for a link two to have. 1850 attack because it's a charmer. Two monsters, including one dark monster. Neat. This card is always treated as a familiar possessed. That's important because, uh, its naming convention is so goofy that <laughs> you need to include this so that it acts properly with its own archetype. Very cool. You can target one dark monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon it to his own this monster points to. If this link summon card is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect will in its owner's monster zone, you can add one dark monster with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. You get a Sangan. Oh, it's defense. It's Witch of the Black Forest. <laughs> you can only use each of its effects once per turn. Neat. Why is this good? Well, uh, it steals dark monsters from an opponent's graveyard, which means that like half the time it will be live in no matter what you're playing against. Half the good decks in this game in like its entire history have been dark. The other half is light. RIP Earth Machine. I'm gonna make fun of Earth Machine in every video until I get Karen to throw a shit fit on my next stream, which will inevitably happen. <laughs> Machina Fortress, go! Overall, it's just a neat versatility card, and being that it is a relatively generic Link 2 means in any kind of dark mirror match, you have some added utility that you can stick in your extra deck in order to be some very interesting going second place and stealing your opponent's uh, nifty crap that they have linked away or whatever that they've put to their graveyard. There is some fun crap you can do with this. I think it's pretty cool. 
You know, this isn't so bad so far. Hey, I even know what this one does. Number eight, Fluundries in the Advent of Adventure. Quick play spell card. Nothing to do with adventure. Banish one winged beast monster from your hand or face up on your field. Semicolon. Add one Fluunderies monster or Fluunderies field spell. Give me a goddamn hey. map. From your deck to your hand. <laughs> then gain 500 life points. I, I don't know why it does that, but hey, 500 life points is 500 life points. I've done worse for, for less. <laughs> you can only activate one of these once per turn. Good on you, Konami, for adding uh, hard ones per turns to good cards. You've, you've finally learned your lesson. Why is this card good? Well, it is a quick play spell card, so its effect would have to be pretty bad for that to not matter. So that's already a good plus to this card. Two, it is a consistency search card for an already pretty consistent deck. Now, the deck is only consistent because it can run weird pot cards instead of, you know, like regular cards like normal decks can <laughs> because it's... <laughs> it doesn't special summon, like, at all. <laughs> but it also gets effects off when its monsters are banished. So not only is it a consistency card, it is proccing their effects for the ones in your head. This is really a dumb card for this deck. I know how to play this one! Or at least I used to. It has been a few weeks, and as always, uh, the brain fog is real. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm either just getting old, or... Uh, I unironically forgot what I was going to say with that joke. That is, that's frightening. Did I hit my head? I just think you're really checked out. Number seven, Theron King Regulus. I don't know. Level eight Earth Machine. Oh. 2800 attack, 1600 defense. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Really, each? Neat. You can target one Theron monster. Therian, Thurian, Thurian? Or one machine monster in your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand and then equip the monster you targeted to this card. Okay, the play lines are coming together. When your opponent activates a card or effect, ooh, quick effect, you can send one Thurian monster from your hand or field to the graveyard. Negate that effect. On a monster that special summons itself that you could presumably use itself to pay its own cost. Heh, <laughs> neat. And its last effect, a Thurian monster equipped this card gains 700 attack. <laughs> ooh. Big number! Also, it can activate this card's second effect as if it were Therion King Regulus. What? That is a very interesting effect. Bestowing its negation ability to whatever this thing is Union Monstered to is actually really cool. And because it is Earth Machines and they're unioning, I could only assume what kind of deck you would play this in. Machina. <laughs> He's gonna quit Discord. You know, it's a good day any day I get to make fun of Earth Machine twice in one video. You know, that that's that really is the friends we made along the way with this. Ah, yes. Finally. The deck I truly have no idea how it functions. <laughs> Let's go, baby! Medora the Sword Article is level 4 Earth Fairy Monster, 1500 attack, 1800 defense. This is a retrain of, I think it's just called Mudora. It's one of Ashizu-ish, Ashizu-ish charge monsters. It's nice to see that her cards are good because she's mommy. She deserves it. I mean, damn. Big respect that she can still be waifu despite the fact that she entered Battle City with a, like a gimmick rogue deck. <laughs> it's like just a degenerate alternate win con. Based. Based. You can discard, you can discard. What is wrong with me? You can discard one other Earth Fairy monster from your hand to special summon this card from your hand. Then place one Gravekeeper's Trap from your deck face up in your spell or trap zone. Neat, face up? So it's like already active? Cool. Now don't be confused by that weird nomenclature. It's not a Gravekeeper's Trap card. No, this card is literally called Gravekeeper's Trap. I had to look that one up when I was reading the script for the first time because I was like, is this a typo? What is, what is it? No, this card exists. Okay. Can't have a Necro's Trap card though, but we can have a card literally called Gravekeeper's Trap. As a quick effect, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard to target up to three cards in any graveyard or five if Exchange of Spirit, the said gimmicky win con card is in your field or graveyard. Shuffle them into the deck. Neat. This allows you to quick effect reuse your own resources that may be in your graveyard that you wish to have them back in your deck or shuffle your opponent's crap into their deck, you know, to like bungle their strategy. And as a quick effect, this this is like three DD crows. That's uh, that's really good. This is in your, this can do it from your graveyard too. <laughs> Understand. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. 
As far as I understand it, all of the uh, Shiju Ishtari Monsters are, uh, are very good. They allow you to graveyard manipulation and uh, mill cards and do things like that. I could understand that if they all have similar abilities, they would, uh, this would be very good. I, I, I think I get it. Number five is Buy Steel Magna Hut. Am I pronouncing that properly? Buy Steel? B Steel? Is like a weird level six dark dragon monster. Here we go. 2,500 attack, 2,000 defense. That's got normie stats. You can target one light or dark monster in either graveyard, banish it, and if you do, special summon this card. Ooh. This is a quick effect if your opponent controls a monster. Big funny. If this card is special summoned, like, I don't know, by its own effect, perhaps, you can activate this effect. <laughs> That's very nice of it. During the end phase of this turn, you can add one dragon monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand, except by beast, by still magnum hut. Bisexual pizza hut. <laughs> You're delicious. <laughs> you can only use each of these effects once per turn. Deep dish pizza, baby. Okay, well the first effect is fantastic. If your opponent controls a monster, you can just special summon this from your hand by banishing a monster from their graveyard. That's a DD Crow that maintains advantage. That's good. Again, it needs to be against a dark or light deck, but considering the fact that like all good decks are either dark or light, odds are this is live. So very neat. And this is also a dark dragon, and considering there is chaos dragons and other things in this game, I could only imagine this has targets in its own deck to use its effect for that get you advantage as well. So even if you are fighting against Earth Machina, you probably still have options to use this effect. I could only assume. Let me know in the comments below if I'm guessing properly. And during the end phase, you can get a just a dragon monster. Just Wow, that's generic. It is during the end phase, which, you know, is not a great time to search a card you might need, but if the other ones have weird quick effect hand trap things like this one does, that is really... Really not a problem. <laughs> this is very good. Number four, right of ASMR. Right of ASMR. Hey Ryan, are you are you enjoying editing the video? Two of these on. Oh wait, no, the other one was Advent of Adventure, which isn't. I literally said that. Oh, I'm getting worried. Why am I reading this card? I know what it does. Normal spell card. If you control no adventurer tokens, you can special summon one adventurer token to your field, which is a Earth Fairy level 4 monster with 2,000 attack and 2,000 defense. And then, if you do not control Fateful Adventure, a continuous spell card, you can place one of those from your deck to your field. Okay, so, besides giving you a free monster to do with what you will, and getting you a continuous spell card, why is this good? Well, uh, the continuous spell card is also a consistency card. It, it allows you to search uh, Griffin Rider as well as discarding a card, which if you discarded one of the equip spells, they will just automatically equip themselves to the adventurer token, thus negating any loss of advantage, as well as searching said equip spells on the normal summon of a monster. I think, I literally just reread it. I think I've recapped that as uh, properly. It's just a very small, pretty, splashable engine you can stick in other decks, giving you a free negate and a free way to deal with something on a board. Not only that, but uh, you can't activate the effects of monsters on the field the turn you activate Rite of Asimir, except special summon monsters, so you can still use uh, uh, Griffin Rider. By not allowing you to the, the effects of normal summon monsters, you can use cheesy things like a mono Awato and won't return to the field, or return to the hand at the end of the, t <laughs> end of the turn, which is <laughs> really cheesy. Hey, I can't activate it. Very neat little card in a very neat little splashable engine. Number three, Sprite Elf. Link to Fire Thunder Monster. That's a weird typing. Hmm. Link arrows, bottom left, bottom right. Good, good link arrows on there. 1400 attack. Two monsters, including a level link or rank two monster. Huh. As long as it's a two, it's good for you. Cannot be used as link material the turn it is link summoned. So when you play this thing, it is now stuck on the board. Oh no. Your opponent cannot target monsters this card points to with card effects, so you, you wouldn't really want to get rid of it anyway. <laughs> it's uh, helping you maintain board presence. During the main phase quick effect, you can target one level two monster in your graveyard, or if your opponent controls a monster, you can target one rank or link two monster in your graveyard, special summon it. So you can either get back one of your frogs, one of your sprites, or 
your, I don't know, uh, an enemy or your, your toad, you can get back a lots of stuff that you may have linked away in order to make this thing in the first place. This is just a fantastic link to monster that allows you to recur some resources, as well as providing some choice protection to the monsters on your board. Nothing tries to out a toad like throwing something directly at the toad. This would prevent you from being able to do that. I really need to learn how to play this deck because uh, you you play it with frogs and it, it well, you know, I guess you don't have Ronin Toten anymore in the real card game. Big sad. Ronin Toten didn't do anything. But just in general, I like I like level two monsters. I think it's fun playing with low level stuff because it's it's fun to make big beefy boards with little tiny boys. That probably could have been worded better. <laughs> Um, phrasing. So yeah, I gotta learn how to play this one because this is actually a very good card. It's not like, uh, it's hard to get Y or anything. Number two, Brand of Fusion. God, I am so sick of seeing this deck. Normal spell card. Fusion summon one fusion monster that mentions Fallen of Albez as material from your extra deck using two monsters from your hand deck or field as material. You cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck except fusion monsters the turn you activate this card, which is barely a restriction. My notes here from Kieran uh, say, uh, basically this is if Red Eyes Fusion had something good to go into. <laughs> it kind of does. It's got that one card. It has one card. Okay, so this is basically just like Fluffles or whatever, where it's just a, a fusion spam deck. The fusion monsters it summons are all very good and have varied effects. Big fan of tax dragon. Can't stand that thing. That thing will kill you faster than you expect it will. And it just does a good job of, of using the materials and things it has to its advantage and making big stupid boards full of big purple dragons. I hate dragons. I hate you more. Watch your point. I also like that the fusion card sends material from the deck. Foolish Burial is a limited card, people. You can just fusion summon from crap in your deck. It's my favorite. Honorable mention, Rinse's Dive, normal, normal spell card. Activate one of the following effects. After you resolve this card for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters except water monsters. Effect number uno. Target one non-link Marincis monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Effect dos. If Marincis Battle Ocean, their field spell, is on the field, special summon one Marincis from your deck. Ooh, you can only activate one of these once per turn. Okay, so it's either Monster Reborn or a Hero Lives. That's very... Very strong. And considering the fact that uh, one of the Link 1s in this deck searches the field spell, having the field spell on your board isn't a big ask. You just kind of grab it along the way when you're making your wombo combo. The only downside to this card, well, I guess there's two downsides to this card. Downside number one is that it does require your deck to be kind of working before it itself can work, which as far as a consistency card is concerned, isn't the greatest thing in the world. It's a little clunky. And two, it's in Marincest, which is... <laughs> Not good. <laughs> it's a very powerful card, balanced by the fact that it is in a terrible deck. I love me some Marincess. Uh, they make big bungus and uh, hope it sticks until your opponent realizes the whole deck loses to MST. <laughs> your castle keeps, cr just starts crumbling down around you. I could talk about my frustrations with this deck until the cows come home though. So <laughs> anyway. Ah, we're finally here. We're finally to the other half of the Ashizu deck that I also don't know what it does. Tier Elements. Tier Lament Kit Cat Kalos. <laughs> Break me off a piece of that meta deck. Dark Aqua Fusion. That's a fun, that's a fun typing though. 2,300 attack, 1,200 defense. What do? Made of one Tier Element Monster plus one Aqua Monster. I, why, I, why don't I play this deck? If this card is special summoned, ooh, not even fusion summoned. You can take one of the Terma cards from your deck, you can either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Also, this thing allows you to target one monster you control. Special summon a Terra monster from your hand or graveyard. And if you do, send the targeted monster to your graveyard. And then, if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard by card effect, like maybe its own, you can send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard. Obviously on the summon, searching a card uh, helps you mitigate the advantage uh, that you lose by fusion summoning monsters. That's always the problem with fusion summoning. And getting any card in your deck is like super powerful, holy shit. Either add it to your hand, like for one of your spells or traps, presumably, or you can send it to your graveyard uh, for setup for extending plays. 
probably one of the monsters, I would assume. And by the same extension, you can send one of the guys on your field to the graveyard in order to special summon a monster from your hand or graveyard, which allows you to keep your combo going, start your combo, or send a choice monster to the graveyard in order to, I don't know, set up whatever it is you're trying to do. Maybe it's this thing because you want to mill those cards. It doesn't have a big flashy effect that makes it like, you know, negate things and steal things or is unaffected by things like a lot of other boss monsters tend to be, but it does have a lot of utility effects, which I understand is probably why this deck is so good because this is moving a lot of cards around from the field to the graveyard to the deck, which, uh, yeah, probably facilitates consistency and, and helps you build the board that you are trying to look for. See, even if I've never played it, I, I can at least understand what it's going for, right? It has something to show for all these years of playing this game. <laughs> Alright guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this was educational for me because I'm assuming I'm gonna have to start dealing with some of this when it comes to Master Duels. <laughs> oh, yay! And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time.